Hello, Justin here and welcome to another video. This time I'm going to be showing you what I do when I test out a guitar amplifier. And mind you, I should warn you first, it's not very musically pleasant. So this video is also subtitled, How to Annoy the Crap Out of the Guitar Store Guys or How to Annoy Your Girlfriend When You're Bringing Her Along Guitar Amplifier Shopping. Um, you know, it seems to me that the common practice to test an amplifier is, you know, you go to the store, you grab the amp, you grab the guitar that you want to test out with, plug it in, and just noodle all your favorite licks on it and you determine uh, from there whether this amp is the right one for you I think you can noodle all you want at home after you bought the amp uh, what you want to be doing when you're at the store I personally feel is that you want to be testing the response of the amp um, under different conditions uh, that being said I want to explain a bit about how the amplifier works before I, we proceed any further uh, the amplifier basically has got three different stages um, to process any guitar signal. First it hits the preamp, that's at the front of the amp. And um, what the preamp, no, I mean in a tube amplifier you're gonna have tubes in the preamp and that will warm up the guitar signal. That was, is going to be sent into your EQ section to color your sound. So you know you got bass, middle, tre treble, presence controls. Um, and from there on it's gonna be sent to the um, the power amp or um, some some really cool tube amplifiers have a post amp uh, section where they've got tubes in the post amp and that will uh, or tubes in a power amp you know depends on what they call it but that basically means that you can warm up your sound even further I mean these are three different places that will interact with one another depending on how one is set um, against the other two so you want to take an amp right you want to set it flat and put the drive at zero because you want to try to amplify it when it's clean um, when um, with the guitar, um, I'm gonna be playing the open E, open B, and the high E strings. And you're gonna be fiddling with the controls as you play these three strings, these three strings at the same time. So that's why I told you it's gonna annoy people because you're gonna be doing something like this. So I just adjusted the drive from 0 to 10, um, just playing that, and you saw that the drive response, um, I mean, the, 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 the preamp gain only really kicks in from around 6 or 7 onwards. That gives you an idea of how much gain that you can get out of the amplifier. So if you're looking for a high gain amp, um, you know, you're going to you're gonna get that high gain saturation at a far uh, earlier point than what I just showed you just now. Um, Okay, now you're going to be testing the EQ control. EQ is a bit tricky because um, they, if you have two different components, the preamp and the EQ, how the preamp is set is going to affect the way the, the EQ is going to respond. So you're going to be testing out the EQ at different points of the preamp gain. So at zero drive or zero gain, um, fiddle around with the bass, middle and treble knobs to see how the EQ responds at that drive setting. So you see from this example that this this amp is um, quite a treble heavy amp. Uh, the bass and middle controls don't really contribute, they don't really cut or boost um, that discernibly as um, or as noticeably as the treble control. So that might be an issue for you if you're looking for let's say a mid scooped kind of sound or a really um, a really you know uh, bass heavy really deep low end kind of sound. This amp may not be the one for you. Uh, but then again, if you are the, the uh, if you set your treble higher and you're and you're the player that goes, that 
that kind of sound. So you know, that's that's the way. You can noodle around a bit after you find out a sound that nice that best suits the amplifier. Anyway, um, so you do this for different drive settings as well. So. Now what you just saw was after I increased the gain on the preamp side, um, all of a sudden the bass control seemed to respond differently, and now I see I can seem to have a bit more bottom end on the uh, on I mean I, I seem to have a bit more bottom end than than what you just previously saw on a clean setting. This is because at a higher gain setting, the um, the way the guitar signals process and saturated um, makes it more susceptible to boosts or cuts in different EQ regions, and so therefore. With a high gain setting on this amplifier, actually you can get a pretty nice um Alright, for the sake of um, keeping this video short, you know, I just showed you roughly some things you can look out for when you're tweaking the amp. In a store, I'll do this a lot slower. I, I'll go, I'll increment the, the gain knob at like, you know, 0.5 or 1 notch at a time and test out every single knob from 0 to 10. And that gives me an accurate, that helps me map out the sort of like the EQ um, spectrum for the amplifier. So if you have time on your hands and if you're really serious about getting an amplifier, try this out and you're gonna be a lot more satisfied when you make that the when I mean, you eventually buy the amplifier because you know it's an amplifier that you really know its strengths and its weaknesses and therefore it helps you to shape and color your sound. Um, if a far more accurate picture in mind. So this is Justin and I hope that you found this helpful. Any comments, questions, raves or rants, you know, post them in the comment box and I will get back to you. Thank you so much. See you.